ready? You ready? Yes, sir. Welcome to the U.S. Open One Pocket Championships for 2019, presented by Q Sports International, being held at Griff's Billiards in Las Vegas, Nevada. The players are about to uh, lag for the break. This is a race of three one pocket. This was our scheduled two o'clock match. Two o'clock match, yeah. And we're a little behind schedule because the last game took what it did. This is George Tha in the booth, joined by Mr. Ben Sutherland. Hello again, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, great match here. This is the winner of this match. Will get into get to play, get in the hot seat match. Uh, we just witnessed Gabe Owen defeat uh, Corey Duell in the last match we had on the stream. Uh, Gabe should have had that match much earlier. Corey stole it from him, uh, stole the game from him to make it Hill Hill. They got into a wedge battle playing one pocket. Took probably added an hour to the game. Yes, it an did. An hour and a half. Mm -hmm. And um, I ended up that Corey, I mean, uh, Gabe was able to win the game and win the match. He will be in the hot seat match. The winner of this will meet Mr. Gabe Owen who also defeated Shane Van Boning and put him to the one loss side. And Gabe's having a really good tournament. Sure, he sure is. We are sponsored by jhelford.com, Cyclop, Kamui, Predator, Simonis, JB Cases, Discount Custom Apparel. We are at Griff's Billiards in Las Vegas, Nevada, home of the U.S. Opens. We just saw something we haven't, I haven't seen yet uh, in this event. The cue ball did not touch the foot rail. He, I couldn't tell if he hit the, the head ball pretty full or the second ball pretty full, uh, but it mm -hmm. caused the, the corner ball, which was the three, went to the foot rail and came back up. Uh, typically, we see the cue ball tracked onto the foot rail, and the cue ball will end up kind of over where the three is. So Warren with a... Let me get a clarification on the rules there for you so I can explain them. Nice shot by the... Look at this cue ball. George is gonna go crunch some numbers and figure something out real quick. We'll try to stay here and entertain you folks. Shot number three, Warren had the break. Mitch with the opening shot, came with a really good return. Was able to push a ball or two over to his side of the table and utilize the eight ball as a blocker. Yeah, I just wanted a clarification on the rules. As long as a ball hits a rail, it is not a foul. I always thought that it was uh, uh, the cue ball had hit a rail. But there is a break in one pocket that can be used where the cue ball does not hit a rail. It ends up dead in the stack. And what you do is you uh, put it to one side, hit the opposite rail into the stack uh, about second ball high between the balls, and the cue ball stays there. You're talking about a kick break? Yeah, the kick break. Mm -hmm. So there is that break and the cue ball stays, and it's not a foul. So, yeah, right. Thank you for checking out. Yeah, that. I just wanted to clarify because um, it used to be an old rule that, uh, so you couldn't use that break, uh, that uh, cue ball had to hit a rail. Are there known advantages or disadvantages to that break? Uh, Good question. Uh, in my experience, I have always welcomed people to use that break. It's easy to get out of. Yeah. It's, that's just my opinion. Some players probably don't like it. And I'm sure when it's executed perfectly, it's real tough to get out of. Yeah. But, you know, you, there's too much that comes into play to execute it perfect. You're coming off a rail. That's true. Yeah. You know, you're kicking, you're kicking at your spot. I feel like you have to hit that break a little firmer, too, mm -hmm. uh, to ensure that an object yeah. ball does hit a rail. It doesn't usually sell out. It can if it's hit uh, poorly, but uh, it's just easy to get out of. And the way players take fouls, you know, no problem. In fact, uh, there was a player in the tournament that's in the tournament. He's already out. He lost his match, second match today. Uh, not an experienced player. He 
told me he looked up on the internet the rules and how to play, and so I gave him a little, <laughs> I gave him a little tutorial playing one pocket, and says, so "You want, you know, want to play a game?" And I did. He came back up the next day. He says, "There's another break you didn't teach me," <laughs> and he was all excited about it. And I said, "Well, if you like that break, I will be glad to play you some for money. <laughs> if you use that break." He says, "Why?" And, and I just told him, "It's easy, too easy to get out of, and turn it around." Yeah. Uh, Especially against an experienced one pocket player. Mm -hmm. Up against the 13. Yeah, there's some standard, standard rules to one pocket. Leave the cue ball in front of your opponent's pocket when you're not sure, and always try to put him up against the ball. You know, like, ideally, he would have put that ball up against the rail and the 13 ball. Right in that little so that he has to shoot away and not be able to use the bottom rail. And that's, that's very, very effective. You saw that done in the last mm -hmm. match, yeah. and it was Gabe that executed it, and Corey executed it very, very well. And Mitch was trying to do the same thing there. Um, what can what can Warren do here? Mitch has got him, and you know, he's got the ten ball that plays to a hole, to his hole. He's got a little strength on his side, but so does Warren. He's got the nine ball, but by doing what he did, you know, Mitch is almost forcing him to do something with the nine ball. Mm -hmm. But this, this young man right here. Uh, Not much room for error with that. No. If he double kisses that cue ball. He gives up the, he, he doesn't give up anything actually. It depends on how hard he hits it. If, if it, if it could, I would think it. You might give up a cut shot. On. Give up a. I feel like he could double kiss if he shoots the straight at the thirteen, which mm -hmm. I don't think he will. Mm -hmm. But I probably shoot slightly toward the two, ensuring it goes a little bit under it. But if he was to hit the left side, it could double kiss and and put the cue ball right back in line with the two. No rail. No rail. He's taking a scratch. Mitch has a two-railer on the nine, if he so chooses. Might he, he's looking to see if he can cut it. Problem with cutting this ball, if he's not successful, it goes into the stack and opens everything up. And this has to be struck so thin and so hard. Yeah, he's just not, he wasn't going for the two-railer. He said, I'm just sticking him against these balls. He's done well to cover the two. I don't think Warren can do anything get rid of that. Don't know if he would, if he could, but I don't. Uh, Warren has a shot. He's got an escape shot off the nine. He doesn't want to move the nine, though, because th that's the only ball that plays well to his hole. Uh, the nine and the 12. He could go off the nine and try to come in between the 110 or the 2-1. What about but shooting, oh, okay, he's going to do it, like shooting the seven or the 13 and then just freezing the cue ball on the seven and clearing ball. that, clearing either one of those object balls out of there. See, oh, he's good. He's good? I, I don't think. think he can. The 10 is close. Yeah. But I think he might just have him. It's tough to tell. Mm. I'm trying to read Mitchell's facial expressions. He's not giving anything <laughs> away. Looking very stoic, as uh, How about Mr. Uh, Alex Laley would say. Go off the six, maybe. Uh, just go off the six and get over to the right. He does better than just get over to the right. Yeah. He tries to tuck him in and to those balls. He was able to yeah. move a ball or two a little bit closer. Uh, let's see, right here, I'm going to put myself in the orange shoes. And I don't like to usually play one pocket from here. But I'm going to shoot this 10 ball and try to get the cue ball down beneath the one. And the spread on the table looks like an eight ball break. <laughs> but that's what, three shots after the break? Three or four? Yeah, about that, yeah. Most of that um, had to do with, I believe, Mitchell's second or third mm -hmm. shot where we thought he might try to thin the two. There's he shot straight into the stack and moved a handful of them. I'm going to pretend I'm Warren Kiamko here and I'm playing Mitch. I've played Mitch quite a few times playing one pocket. Um, Mitch is going to go up against the 13 again. Maybe not, 
not, but I think that's what he's going to do. That's what I would do. Yep. And he tucked him in tight. Mm -hmm. uh, Warren already showed us he's not not doesn't mind shooting this shot. Just going to put him between both balls, like that. Thirteen's not. First thing Mitch did was tell him that the 13 was not froze, and he just go ahead and touch that, touch it to a rail. Oh, they both hold one. I guess he scratched. He didn't get a rail either. That 13 cost him both a ball. <laughs> I didn't see that. <laughs> yeah, he just uh, he just hit it and didn't catch the rail with it, and so he spotted his penny up. So I'm thinking if he didn't hit a rail, the 13's not froze. This is the second time this week these two have played each other. Or I shouldn't say this week, but throughout the duration of these three events. Mitch didn't play the straight pole, which was our second event. Warren was able to knock Mitch out in fifth, sixth place of the straight. U.S. Open bank pole event. Bank pole? Yeah, he didn't play the straight pole. That's right. So they've already played once this week. Warren edged him out four to one in the bank pool. We'll see how uh, how one pocket shapes up. Um, Warren Kiamko plays this game pretty darn well. A lot better than most people give him credit for. And he does what the Filipinos do. Keep it simple. Mm -hmm. Nothing fancy. Uh, he just they just see the game and with such simplicity and they just keep it simple that's a great shot <laughs> cleared all three of them out of there so you thought you were safe huh <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and two rail the 13 ball over by the two ball and stop the cue ball on the rail. See what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. You think I'm crazy? No, no, no. <laughs> I like that shot. He yeah. hasn't even looked at that, but yeah. Yeah, but, well, I, I'm, I'm just going to play safe. But this, I, I said I was going to be Warren playing Mitch. Oops. Uh oh. Now you see why I wouldn't attempt that. Did you give up anything? Uh, I don't like see a shot. I think the seven might split the nine and the fifteen. Uh, possibly, especially from this angle. Looks like it might, and if it does, uh, Mitch is going to go down quite a few balls, if not the game. Yeah, it does go. Look at that. That was a great shot. Fifteen to thirteen, then I'm gonna play shape on the twelve. And settle for the one nine if you don't get there. Uh, if I get if I get on the one nine I'm gonna be on the twelve, so <laughs> um, what if you run right into the twelve? I think you'll run right into the six eleven. Yeah. Let's get on the twelve. Only way you're running into that twelve is if you're lower on Spin, that three ball and yeah. or thirteen ball, excuse me, I'd and hit, spinning it two rails. I'd hit the one before I hit the twelve and I'd hit the nine before I hit the one, so Mitch got away with murder. Didn't hit hard enough. So I look for Mitch to be making two balls on this shot. The seven in his pocket and mm -hmm. the 13 in Warren's. To get it out of the way. Yep. Just don't follow it in. You don't want to leave that freebie there for, for Warren. That ball's as good as gone anyhow. Don't I don't let know if he'll play for the 13 or if he'll play to, to put the... He played for it. Oh, no. Don't show your partisanship. I just said, oh, no. I would have said the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, if Warren shot it. Well, we, we can't help but be a little a little partial to Mitchell. He's doing the commentary with us. Mm -hmm. um, knowing this kid since he was 16 years old, I watched him progress. Um, this young man, excuse me, he's now 32. 30, yep, 32. He'll be 33 in August. Mm -hmm.
Pretty good shot. We've met on the field of battle. And he has the best of it. Yeah, he learned kind of early on that uh, can't beat him, join him. So we became teammates instead of there you go. allies rather than enemies. Nothing but respect, but I will say that young man cost me two eight ball state championships. The second one, I won it the first year and uh, went hill hill with him the second. And I thought I had that match one. Match one. And he won it. And there was, there was two years in a row there was three titles open. Nine ball, ten ball, and eight ball. The first year that I won the eight ball, Mitch won the ten ball. Scott Frost won the nine ball. <laughs> I finished third in the nine ball that year. Uh, Strong. The, the next year, um, Mitt, uh, Scott won the nine ball, Mitch won the ten ball, and he won the eight ball, and I came in second in the eight ball. Not as well in the nine ball. <laughs> but... Uh, so we have a little history. That one hurt. I wanted that eight ball title to have it two years in a row. Had we, had I won the eight ball that year, we would have finished exactly the same two years in a row. That'd be pretty cool. That's a strong finish, by the way. And that was on nine foot table, not a bar table. That was at Main Street. Was it? Yeah, I think it was 06, 07, or 07, 08, one or the other. It was two years in a row, uh, somewhere in that time span. Had a good eight ball tourney at uh, Main Street about two years ago, the Diamond Pool Tour. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of had, uh, I guess you could say, like the day or the tournament of of my life. I didn't win the event, but I was able to take out uh, Tim Daniel, Bobby Emmons, and Mitch Ellerman, knocking them out, and then I sent Scott to the B side earlier on. So it was I think I heard about that tournament. Yeah. I heard Scott make reference to it one time at uh, Bull Shooters. You yeah. guys were talking about it. Yeah, I had a... Uh, congratulated you for that. Yeah, in about 16, 17 years, 15, 16 years playing in the same town as Scott. We hadn't run into each other in any tournament until <laughs> that year's Diamond Tour, and we ran into each other six or seven times, and I think it was six times, and we came out three and three at the end of the season, which for me is a heck of an accomplishment because mm -hmm. Scott's an amazing player. Mm -hmm. And I won two bounties that season just for beating him because he was uh, a champion from a previous tournament. Oh, right. So they put a bounty on his head, and... I was able to collect on two of those. And, yeah, he, he actually made a post, which was pretty cool, um, kind of just saying, congrats, Ben. I know how much you've been you know, trying to get there, and you're the only person that, that you beat me the most of anybody on tour this season. Mm -hmm. So I was, felt pretty good about it. But anything can happen in sure. you know, shorter races to seven. Bar table. That was bar table, yeah. mind you. On a bar box tournament, I remember Scott beating me 10-0 one time. I also remember him beat, beating him on the bar box uh, tournament. In the only time I ever beat him, actually, uh, bull shooters on those valleys they used to have there on the bar boxes. One of the, one of the d Desert Classic Tour. Yeah, I remember back when it was DCT, before it was the Diamond Pool Tour, mm -hmm. it was the Desert Classic Tour. Uh, Scott was playing an event, a bar table nine ball event at Metro, Metro Sports Bar, before they, mm -hmm. before they got uh, Diamond Tables. They had the Valley Bar Tables. Uh, it was the second day of the tournament, final four on the winner's side. I was out of the event. I went in to watch it, and uh, Scott Frost was playing Mike Williams. Mike flipped the coin. Scott called it. Scott won the toss. Mike didn't shoot one time in the set. It was not an alternate break format. It was winter break. Mm -hmm. Scott broke and ran. I think it was nine. And it was right when he first started dating Erica, his girlfriend or fiance or wife or whatever they are now. And she looked at me and said, wow, he's really good. And I said, honey, you must not have any idea who you're dating. <laughs> he is a monster. Okay, well, this monster at the table here uh, made a mistake uh, on his last shot before he walked away from the table and he scratched his ear. And that's funny. Mitchell scratches his head sometimes when he makes a mistake. <laughs> uh, and he'll sit there and say, how do I do that? I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. So anyway, he's looking around. Uh, his pocket is 
over on the left, the high side of the of your screen on the left. He's he's playing a little loose with his cue ball. I'm sorry to say, but he's just sold out three balls. Yeah, he's got a yeah, had to come straight across. On his face. That had to come straight across, and even if it did come straight across, he gave up a bank shot, or or a shot on the on the you know you take to take that out. Um, uh, you know, sometimes you see a player uh, has a big win or just wins a tournament, and he comes back and he's expecting to do it again, mm -hmm. and doesn't we're, play the same. We were talking about that yesterday. Yeah. Doesn't play the same, you know. That, I think Alex that was the fear example. Fear's not there. Alex was the, is the example. That's right. Uh, he just won that tournament in Louisiana. He's come over, and uh, you know, you kind of expect to have the players lay down for you or something. And no, they're here to win too. They're they want him to be the guy to upset the guy that just won. Mm -hmm. uh, they're the underdog. They have nothing to lose. <laughs> Ego-wise. Does he play position on the two or the nine? Neither. He's got to have to kick the 13 out of there. Just play the three-ball combo. Uh, actually, he <laughs> may be able to play the two-ball. It's so, so close. He's not happy. I think he's looking at possibly back cut and nine. Yeah, he's actually probably looking at uh, shooting the two ball, I mean, the 13 out with the nine. And he's just going to go ahead and shoot the 13 right out. Yeah, just get underneath it with a kick shot. Yep, that was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Sent it right back over to his side. Stole some balls from Mitchell. Mitchell's been careless with his cue ball so far. Yeah, a couple of them have gotten away. That's another one. He's put the ball in play and protected it. It's actually a pretty good shot. Maybe he's not careless with the cue ball. When he first shot that, I thought he was going to leave a shot on that uh, 11. A little back yeah, it cut. would be a foolish shot, I believe, for Warren to take that on right now. Oh, this one, yes. Yeah, so, but if the ball was not there, yeah, it was. If he left the shot, I thought he was going to. Uh, it would have been Coyton's. Could have been Coyton's. Foiled again. Go off the one down here, past the four, or underneath the four. See that little alley to get underneath it. Mm -hmm. That's what I think you might do. I don't know that he can do it. He risks hitting the two ball. <coughs> yeah, that's pretty tight. I'm going to have to retract my statement there as far as his next play. Mitchell made a good shot. Yeah, leaving that four ball there yeah, is kind of made a good shot. Made it tough for Warren to pull the trigger on anything. Is he going to just hit the six ball into the deuce? I think he's going to hit stick the stick him on the eleven. Eleven into the thirteen. Play the eleven toward his hole and freeze the cue ball to the back of the six. Yeah, I like that because the, the, I like that actually. Yes. As long as he doesn't get wrapped up shooting the shot more than the safety. You know how sometimes mm -hmm. you, you get wrapped up and you say, oh, man. No, he's not going that route. He's going off the one underneath the four. That's exactly what I thought. And I didn't like it. But see, I was trying to go on the inside of the four, which would be stupid. He did it the right way. I wasn't sure. You would have gone or tried to go between the four and the rail? Yeah, I just wasn't sure he had... Um, 
You could hit the f hit the one that thin and get there. Stay in front of that floor. And stay yeah, stay above the floor yeah. when you hit the rail. I see what you're saying. Yeah, that's what that's what kind of scared me. Being out there and looking at the at the angle, you'd be able to see that a lot better. From here, I thought he he'd, he'd be best served to go underneath the floor. You know, I, I, I look, as I look at the rack right here, I'm not sure Mitch likes having those four balls on on Warren's side. Uh oh, he's okay. Again, he's protected the four ball. I think. Mm, looks like he can see the corner to corner. Yeah, he can make it to the upper corner, so he can uh, he can shoot by this. He can't shoot straight at it, of course. He no, can kick at it if he wants. Uh, the kick is a scratch. Good scratch. You can hear a handful of matches getting started. And there you go. Our 4 p.m. matches are starting just a little bit early around the room. If you've just joined us, you're watching Warren Kiamko versus Mitch Ellerman in the 2019 U.S. Open one box champion, no, one pocket, one box. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if you said one box or one ball. One pocket championship. Yeah, that's what I thought he'd shoot right there. Yeah, it was a good shot. And left it in a good shot, in a good spot. Um, he may be able to just bank this uh, 11 ball if the two ball doesn't pass the 13 he just looked at that he may be able to bank this 11 ball and bank it he did and see that little group of balls there blocks the one does the Nothing six goes pass by. no I don't think it does if it did I welcome Warren to shoot it no, if it passed, I think Warren would make it. But I, like I'm saying, I don't think it does, so I welcome him to shoot. He's just taking the 13 out. Or is that the 11? That's the 11, I'm sorry. Just taking it out of the pocket. Free shot on the one ball. Might even be able to play shape on the 11 ball. No, he runs into the 11 ball if he follows it, I think. Mitchell is playing with, uh-oh, the mm. dreaded double bubble over in front of your opponent's hole. That's why you don't hit the bank shots hard. What were you saying about what Mitch is playing with? A, our, one of our sponsor's cues, a predator. Oh, yes. You know the model number and all that kind of stuff. I do. Yeah, he uses the Predator Black 4-3. The fourth generation of the Black Series. It's model number three in the fourth generation. That's the butt of the queue, right? That's the, the, correct. The Revo is just a Revo. Correct, okay. yeah. Same shaft that John Smith just got done running 626 balls with. Yep, John uses a 12.4, Mitch uses a 12.9. Yeah. So just a half millimeter difference in diameter. Billy also, 12.9. Uh, mm -hmm. those, uh, those carbon fiber and carbon composite shafts really seem to be changing the game a little bit. Well, they're changing everybody's bank account, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> Warren says, you guys bother me. I'm getting rid of you. <laughs> no more clusters. And it's going to go up by the three ball. Yeah, he likes going up there. So our hot seat match will take place at noon tomorrow. We'll oh. see Gabe Owen versus the winner of this match. Oh, by the way, viewers, I believe we're starting at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, on the live stream, we're starting at 10 a.m., not at noon. Ah, so maybe that match will get pushed to 10, or maybe we'll have a B-side match to play for you folks at 10. 
Or maybe we start the stream at noon. I'm not sure. We'll have to figure all that out. I know the players will start at 10, but mm -hmm. I, I imagine we will as well. And bring as much coverage of this event to you folks as we can. Uh, let's, let's clarify that. I heard him say we're starting at 10, and you made a good point. Is the stream going to start at 10, or is uh, the tournament going to start at 10? Uh, let's get Vince. Oh, he's coming around your side here. George is going to figure it all out here. And Ben was correct. The hot seat match will be at 12, and that's when we start the stream. I'm very sorry okay. to get you all excited. You thought you were going to get two more hours. <laughs> Another match. No. Uh, I think we're starting at 10 just for the sake of catching up the B yes. side a little bit. Yes. So. As expected, we've run a little over with uh, some of the matches. And we're going to start them at 10 for the players. Yeah, it's kind of like a double-edged sword when it comes to uh, those scheduling windows. Mm -hmm. You have some matches, you know, we, we allow for two hours or we plan for two. And, you know, you have some matches that take 30, 45 minutes, maybe an hour at most. So then you're left with an hour of either a replay or dead air or, you know, another match possibly being streamed across the room. And then the flip side of that is similar to what happened in our, our last match with Corey Duell and Gabe Owen. That one took three hours. So it ended up actually running over an hour. So it's kind of CSI and, and our tournament director do all they can to, to plan it as well as possible, but there's just no predicting. It's Well, we've had to make some adjustments. Mm -hmm. um, the fields were a little light, and so uh, we changed part of the format of the tournaments. And um, some of the you know matches ran over, so we had to change part of. Uh, we make adjustments, mm -hmm. you know, to keep things trying to keep things as smooth as possible for the players and for the viewers. It's one of the things about advertising uh, times to a tournament, like this is going to be this hour and then as a viewer you sit there and say well okay I've got I can do this this and this and I can come back at 2 o'clock to uh, take care of this or to watch this and things could run over and um, it could change a little bit as this match did this match was supposed to start at 2 o'clock and instead it started at 3 and change yeah it was about 3.20 3.30ish yeah I think when we started and this is still the first game mm-hmm uh, Kiampko has six balls. Mr. Elliman, zero. Is he banking this? Uh, he's banking. The, he's cross banking the four ball. This could. No, no. There's no kiss. He run. He notice he drew away from it, recognizing that there could possibly be a kiss. Mm -hmm. He drew away from the the path of the four ball. It also got him a little position on this ball. Now will Mitchell shoot this? Looks like he is. He's going away from the ball. And he's hit it light. He's going to give up a shot. He's giving up a couple of really good shots. This, this, this could cost him the game. Mr. Warren could actually just get out right here. Got a couple of options there. Yeah. Draw back for the nine or just follow down for the bank or just stop it for the six. He strikes the ball rather accurately. Certainly does. You see he's got a real loose wrist most mm -hmm. of the time, which is pretty typical for the, the Filipino play. You see that a lot. Uh, Dennis especially, Dennis and Efren, both mm -hmm. boosty as well. I guess they all are, man, now that I think about it. They all have that real loose borderline pinky hanging off most of the time. There's a couple of coaches in the Philippines that are pretty famous for coaching. I can't think of their names. Do you happen to know who they are? Um, I'm not sure where he's located nowadays. Uh, Ramon Mystica. Mystica, that's what it's. I believe he has spent about a lifetime with Warren, or excuse me, with Efren. Mm -hmm. Whoa. And I know, I, I know. Look. Well, Rolando is Efren's oh, traveling yes. partner. Yeah, but Rolando not, as well. He's not his coach. I don't think. Well, look at this break. Nothing moved off that left side. And that was Mitchell's break. Orange looking at this. This is a, a little, I don't want to say easy to get out of, but 
He wants to find the air. Yeah. Is he looking at putting the cue ball? In? Yeah. I'm he's trying to play something into the stack he's and back uh, toward his hole. He might be going two rails into the eight. Getting the eight ball kind of full and, 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 and sending the, the 13 over to his hole. I feel like or just softly just hitting the, the 13 up and put the cue ball up against the eight. Yeah, that's it. That's all he was doing. Yeah, that's exactly that's what shot. I would shot. Just a nice soft shot. But for a second, I thought maybe he was going to shoot hard. Mitch has got a nice kick shot on this four. Yep. That's what I didn't like about that because the return was, that was his return shot. I was wondering if the one ball was dead. Things you have to guard against. Now, see, oh, Warren just, is in trouble. Here. I just had a mental lapse. I'm thinking, what is he doing? I thought that was Warren's hole. No. <laughs> I, got the, I got the pockets confused. <laughs> I'm thinking, that was terrible. Why didn't he just bank the eight? But it makes sense now. <laughs> he was about there. He could have just banked, but that's not yeah. his hole. Uh, Warren's in trouble. Warren's, uh, Mitch has shot a very nice shot. Little kick shot. He recognized that the one ball would go towards his hole as long as he hit it good. He could have slid up a little bit. It wouldn't have really hurt him. It was hard to sell out uh, with that kick shot. Taking intentional here. Why? What's it going to oh, get? Oh no! Him? Yeah, you got five balls in front of you. He's got six balls in front of his hole. What do you gain by an intentional? Hopefully, Mitch makes a mistake. He's already made enough mistakes to uh, last him a lifetime. I don't see him making much more. I try to find a way to get to where. Uh, I did it again. I was thinking this is Warren's okay. hole. I, this is the second or third time this game. I've thought that that was Warren's pocket. He'll kick two rails to the eight. And unfortunately, if he doesn't get behind the eight, which is really hard to do, he gives up the five bank into the one. So he might just kick the one ball in. But that's risky. You just hang it. You know, got to find something here. And uh, I'm going to kick at the eight ball. I don't see any options. I don't see... What he might do to turn things around. If he's real crazy, I'll tell you a shot. If he's real crazy and he's real accurate, I'm going to three rail kick between that space between the 10 ball and the 14 ball and try to lay the cue ball. It's an intentional. He can't. He doesn't have that. He does. Yes, he does. I don't think he can get to the side. He's got to get to close to the side pocket to do that. Mm hmm. But that is, you know, taking an intentional for that, and he's leaving in the middle of the stack there. That's about all you can do. <sighs> Keep in mind, uh, they're playing cue, foul, cue ball fouls only, but if he moves two balls bridging over the stack, it is a foul. And in our last match with Corey Doolin and Gabe Owen, uh, Corey moved the ball, and uh, Gabe thought it was a foul. And Gabe was still thinking straight pull. Yeah. See, now he's looking to see what I just called. Get the cue ball over there, and now he's going to see that I can get the cue ball there, and it doesn't have to work for me. He still has a shot. But I've got to do something to contain him. If he takes a foul, Mitch will take one right back. Yeah, that's kind of what guarantee. I was thinking. If he just kicked to the left rail and put the cue ball right on the nine, and now he took the foul, yeah. but yeah, yeah, he's... Yeah, double him up, take the foul, double him up. Mitch has a cut on the 14 ball, on the 15 ball. I think he shoots it all day. Because the only thing can happen wrong here is hit it bad and scratch off the five. That was a foul. I was waiting to see. Okay, there we go. Warren came back with a nickel coin to mark it up. You think that's a nickel? Or is it a silver penny? Oh. 1943 penny? <laughs> That looks like a copper penny to me. Oh, he went this way. Look at this. Oh, wow. How creative. And he's, I think he may have protected the 15. It's tough to tell. Ah, uh, yeah, but he can 
You can make it with oh, this. No. Uh, you hit the rail just before the ball, so you go rail first on the 11 with the 14 ball, and it also removes the one, and you're sending all the balls to your hole. So you don't do this soft. And if you want, with a cue ball, you can play the cue ball to the rail and into the six. So you don't sell out. Unless you can hold it. If you can't hold it, play the six to move it. And that keeps your cue ball on the right side, too. Yeah, see, he's going rail first there. He's counting them out. Uh, if you hit it soft, it stops there. If you hit it hard, it doesn't. It does come up. So he's looking to see what he can do here. I'm pretty sure that when he pointed to that spot above the one ball, mm -hmm. he was thinking that's where the 10 ball will end up if I go rail first on the 13. He could bank the six ball to the side pocket and use the cue ball to make the 13. I actually like that too. But he could follow it in. It's dangerous where that ball is. I like playing the 15 mm -hmm. real first, like you were saying originally. Kind of pushing the one, maybe even getting lucky and pushing the eight as well, depending on how full he hits the one with that 15. Yeah, I'm not going to be slow rolling this. He missed it. Missed the whole ball. Well, I can see Mitchell getting five, six. Yeah. I can see him getting out, too. If he gets good on the four ball, he gets out. I think he'll pick up, pick, he'll pick up, pick off all the potatoes. <laughs> this is a little funny. Well, he just come. Oh, he's gonna shoot this ball first. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think he was. He knew he was gonna have to hit it really firm uh -huh. to hold it for that six, and in doing so, he might lose the 15. Well, then just draw the ball. Use the 15 into the 13 and play shape on the six, and then come over, because now he doesn't have the angle he wants to break him out, does he? Yeah. Now he doesn't have the angle to break him out. He does now. I, I want to use that four ball to open up the stack to get more balls at the end. I try to save it for the end. Nice cue ball. And watch this ball. Don't hit that. Something's got to score. Uh, uh, that actually hurt him. That was going to open up a ball for him. He was going to push the two ball right, in, right, right into his uh, path. I didn't. Now he doesn't have a shot. Too steep of an angle to try and spin into the 14 after contact oh, no. with the 8. I, I think he can hit the 14. He may be able to spin it. I actually, I, I like to just go into the stack. Or does he just bank the 10 ball now? Actually, I might bank the 10 ball now. What you got, Gunner? Bank shot? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jacked up bank shot? Actually. With the potential yeah. to be the hero or sell out? I don't think he sells out. I think he uh, he can hit the ball to, to come up. He's looking to see if he has a shot on the six. If he banks the nine, where is the cue ball going to end up? Right about there. Oh, by the seven right ball? Right up by the seven ball. I feel like it's going to end up with a shot on the 12. Look how far he went to begin with, and look how uh, where the cue ball went. Mm -hmm. He was he was okay, but he was over a ball. Makes it tough. Easy to easy to misjudge your shot. You were you were, and he was right to be cautious. But now the time is here to remove those balls. What's the best way to do that, though? Um, Without selling out anything afterward. Possibly the nine ball into the six, because that brings the cue ball down. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to picture this by pointing at the screen. Sorry, Ben. No, you're fine. <laughs> um, 
The nine ball goes down and up, and the cue ball stops. The nine ball could go in the hole and come back and hit the cue ball. You don't want that. So he might just kick this softly or go off the 12 and get behind those balls. Oh, that's a good one. It doesn't do much for moving them, but it just no. contains for the time being. Get up against them, make him move. six ball towards this hole. I don't think so, because that is uh, the proverbial no-no in one pocket. You kick to move a ball, not to pocket a ball. Although Corey Duell is showing us, has proven yeah. this wrong there, he's, hasn't he's kicked he? kicked at a few this week. Yeah, successfully kicked at a few. It says, draw this one, Gunner. Mm -hmm. Warren's slowly getting what he wanted, and that is to clear those, those three or four balls mm -hmm. out of Mitchell's pocket. He's cleared them successfully. And this is now turned into an up table game, yeah. almost. Well, they're still in the middle, so that's not too bad. Yeah, we saw this last game, though. Quickly, it early on in the rack, it turned into majority up table, and it didn't favor Mitchell. And again, Mitch just tried to play a safety with that seven ball and leaked out and sold out the 10 ball. Well, we have a little time, so let's take a look at some of these these two players here. On the earnings list, on, featured on AZB, AZ Billiards, Mitch Ellerman is 59th this year so far. I think he has uh, about 5,100. Warren Kiamko is 127th. He's got $2,350 hmm. earned in tournament winnings. Sees Mitch on the third page or the second page? Third page. So Warren surveying the situation before he pulls the trigger on this 10 ball. Surveying. Imagine, imagine he will come back over for the three. Oh. No, I was mistaken. Yeah. Warren has $4,350 in earnings in 2018, actually. So far this year, oh, I see his earnings went up. He did have 31. Uh, because they already added the U.S. Open Straight Pool Championship. He came third place, uh, and then the U.S. Open Bank Pool. So these two tournaments in the yep. past six days made him some money. What did that show for uh, 2018 for Warren? Uh, 2018 was... Da, 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 da. Oh, for 2018, it shows 26,000. Okay, I thought you said... 2600 or something. I was like, I know one event where he made more than 10 grand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He had a 20 in, in 18. Heck, he uh, he won the 10 ball challenge at Freezer's Ice House. And this is one I was alluding yeah. to was Andy Mercer. Oh, yeah. they don't factor. Oh, that makes sense. In there, there was a, a side a side auction as well, too, but that wouldn't be part of the tournament. That's not part of the tournament. Uh, then you made 5,000 at Andy Mercer, nine ball tournament. And then you made. Uh, 1,200 for first place in the Virginia State 8-Ball Championship Open. And he made 1,200 for second place in the 10-Ball Championship in Virginia. He also took third in the 45th Annual Texas Open, Open Division. And he took fourth at Freezer's Ice House One Pocket Challenge, which was done won by uh, Dennis Arpolio. Yep. That was uh, the same weekend or the same time that uh, Eklund Kachi broke and ran the set <laughs> playing Pegula. 10 ball against Alex on a table with a four and an eighth inch pockets or four and a sixteenth, something something pretty tighter than standard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, four and an eighth. Yeah, I've played on that table. It's rough. Yeah. I actually played Eklund just before he played Alex. Did you? Yeah. He broke and ran the first two racks on me. I ended up losing eight to three. 
Hey, you got closer than Alex did. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's funny because I had never seen him play before. And he broke the balls, and as I watched him run the first rack, and then the second, I turned over to my wife and I said, this guy can freaking play. Mm -hmm. He's got a beautiful, monster, beautiful uh, monster break. mechanics. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like he looked like RoboCop, uh, you know, just stroking away. He looks like he should be a, a boxer. Or he's built like a boxer. You think so? Mm -hmm. Not at all. No. Not tall, slender. You think he's slender? The guy's I got think he's slender. Twenty-inch biceps. Uh, I missed it. I didn't see it. He's left Mitch a good, well, Mitch is, is Mitch on the right side or the left side? Uh, Mitch is on the left. Mitch is on, I thought he was on the right. No, he's on okay. the right. If he's on the right, he's banking this one. Right for his hole. Yep, he's on the right. That's a high percentage shot for Mitch. I don't see anything here, so. Um, I think I might go ahead and try to get behind the 12 and protect those two balls, the 10. Oh, he banked it and got behind the 7. It's oh, even better. Wow. Put a ball in play. That's Very nice. aggressive. Worked out very well. <coughs> nice shot with the cue ball. Very, very good cue ball there. You know, that's one of the things about calling these games on some of these high-powered shooters mm -hmm. uh, that are play, they play very aggressive and have good cue ball control. Uh, it's calling their shots because they'll play shots that, you know, you don't really see uh, as a standard shot because of their ability, because of their strength. Scott's hard to call that way. Mm -hmm. So is Dennis. Um, Efren is kind of predictable. Tony's not. <laughs> no, Tony Johan is not predictable in the slightest some of his shots will sit there and you'll go, he's got to be out of his, gosh, he made that. Yeah, <laughs> jumping over balls. Uh -huh. and uh -huh. they Pick balls out of the stack that, yep. that don't look like they have any business being looked at, much less called and played. And he makes them. So. And those uh, are the shots that if you or I, or myself anyway, took on, likely not going to execute and likely going to sell out. Well, and not only that, so if somebody's watching, they're going to call you an idiot for shooting them. Hmm. But in his case, he proves them wrong almost every time. Yeah. It's like you're uh, either an idiot or a genius, and That's he right. tends to be the genius majority. You can't argue with success. No. Hard to argue with success. You can sit there and tell a player, you might have made it this time, but it's going to cost you the next hundred times you shoot that shot. Yep. Because sometimes you, s you watch a player take a really low percentage shot, shoot it and execute it, and he goes, that's a good shot because I made it. Yeah, you made it this time. The next 50 times you shoot it, you probably won't. And it's going to cost you the game. So enjoy your success. Yeah. Learn from it, though. Don't let it cost you money. Because the next time you try it, if it doesn't work, give it up. <laughs> So the loser of this match will be guaranteed 5th, 6th, and will play at 10 a.m. tomorrow. And they happen to fall into the same bracket as Shane Van Boning and I believe Alex Pagulian. Okay, let's take a look at. Um, nope, I'm wrong about that last part. At Mitch's for 2019, he came in third in the Andrew Mercer that you were at. Mm -hmm. He came in fifth at the Jay Swanson tournament. He's done well at before. He won it. Yeah, he's uh, won it once before. Once in California. Yeah. Um, he came in fifth in the U.S. Open Bank Pool tournament this year. 28th in the one pocket. And then if you go down a few years, third in the Andy Mercer again. 
third in the U.S. Open 10 ball championships. Yeah, I think he played uh, Shane, not Shane for the hot seat. He played for the hot seat of the U.S. Open uh, 10 ball championships last year. He put Shane on the one loss side. Correct, yeah, he did. And uh, he lost a hot seat match. To Alex. And then he lost his next match. To and Shane. Settled for, settled yeah. third, yeah. Oh, Shane ran over him in that hot seat yeah. in that match after the hot seat. Earlier in that tournament, Mitch had some amazing wins over. Oh, yeah. He, oh, he got he, a fortunate win over Corey Duell, uh or excuse me, over Billy Thorpe. He had fairly convincing wins over Shane, Shane, Dennis Hatch, and Corey Duell. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Shane said, enough of that, kid. I'll uh, <laughs> spank you around a little bit. It's going to be me and Alex in the finals. Yeah. And then uh, and he won. next year, or the year before that, uh, he was up in Reno, I guess. Oh, they don't have it in Reno anymore. They have it here in Vegas now, don't they? The, um, US, the U.S. Bar Box Tournament. The U.S. Bar Table Championships, they actually didn't have them last year. Uh, um, this is uh, 2017. Yeah, they, in 2018, they had them at uh, the Westgate. Okay. I believe 2017 was still in Reno. Okay, well, he was fifth in the 10 ball, fifth in the 9 ball, and fifth in the 8 ball. It, it may have been here in 17. I can't remember. But I do know that uh, I don't believe this last year we had the bar table championship. And then he spanked everybody in Arizona with a uh, diamond pool stop five, seven, six first places. Uh, second place in 2016, losing to Rodney Morris. I actually put him on the one loss side, and he came back and spanked me <laughs> in the hot seat. And um, uh, not the hot seat. Wait, I was going to say, have you beat him? How'd, you, how'd he spank you in the hot seat? It, because of the, it wasn't a hot seat. It was a hot seat for the for the, for the the winter bracket. The way they, they uh, did those tournaments was um, you had one winner on the A side, and then you came from B side and played. And I forget how it was, but I ended up playing him again. But it wasn't the hot seat. Uh, Rodney had the hot seat. Hmm. So I lost to, I guess I lost to Rodney in the hot seat for that. Because I put him on the loser side. And then I played Rodney. He beats me 7-1. to one. And um, then I met Mitch on his way through the loser bracket. So he took second to Rodney. And I, was, uh, and I wasn't even third. I was like fifth, sixth because of the B players, the way they, 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 oh, they, they position that. That's right. They did separate uh -huh. them, uh, the A division and the B and division. In fact, he had a bunch of seconds in the Desert uh, Diamond Pool Tour. Not much activity in 2015. Well, right now we've got a flip-flopped version of last game, whereas Warren had the commanding ball count lead to Mitch's Zero. Now we've got 5-0 in favor of Mitch this game, which well could easily turn around at any time. Yeah, he's got to win this game. He doesn't want Warren to take a 2-0 lead. Warren did really good with that cue ball placement there. Mm -hmm. That's Mitch's pocket to our lower yeah. right. I think he's going to kick it the 12-ball. And the Good hit. Down a rail, yes. Good speed too. Left in, nice. left, left in the treetop. If he wants to shoot down table, he can't shoot to the side, and Mitch will welcome that. He says, "Go ahead and shoot there. Sell out to me." He'll go off the 14 ball. Or is he going to go for a shot here? You see something he likes over there. I don't see anything I like over there. Bad. Not a bad now, play. Just bank the 15 ball back up between the 11 and the 14. Mitch might play the 10 here. <laughs> I think he. Didn't even I'm see not going to say it's a free shot, but I think he knows he can avoid the three and take the cue. No? I tell. think he gets shape on the three. That could be as well. I'd be concerned about the 15. Just nice spears shot. it. Yeah. Just spears it. I'd be trying to take the cue ball kind of back over by the side pocket just to take the 15 out of play in case I missed that ball. But Mitch went for the win and has it has paid off got for him. It. Just got to pocket this ball. And there's the 
size of that one. So Good game of peace. Yep. So far we are favoring the breaker. Now you see why I didn't like shooting anything up there and just wanted to go off the 14 ball. As safe as he thought he got, he mm -hmm. gave up a shot. Yeah, it looked pretty good until we got that other yeah. camera angle and we could see yep. the 10 had a path. Yeah. He, I just didn't think he... He attacked it more aggressively than I thought he would, which paid off. Oh, yeah. like Warren put down a pretty good break. Yes, he did. Seven balls in a good spot. Nicely covered. Oh, that dead 4-6. Uh, Looks like it's almost dead anyway. Mitch has to find his way here. Yeah, I slowly kick at the seven ball. Softly kick at the seven. Oh, how? How? The 14, the ball's in the way. Am I going to go up to the headrail and kick toward his hole? No, no. no, <laughs> that's, no, what no. I, that's all I could see because I knew that the 15 was. I hadn't seen the 15. From the angle we had before, it looked like it would, it would, he could kick before it and spin over to it. But no, he's going to go three rails inside the seven ball. Oh, uh, disaster. He wanted to hit the rail before the seven. He was taking a scratch. Smacked his cue. Good thing he doesn't have to worry about a ding in that shaft. Yeah. <laughs> he, came in, he came in pretty long. He was trying to come in short. Yeah. And uh, if he comes in short, he's okay if he misses the seven, but he went long. Easy to do. Kind of easy to do. Well, big advantage for Mr. Kiamko here. Let's see what he'll net off this offering. Generous offering from Mitch Elliman. So let's see what you can do, kid. Sir. <laughs> uh, Warren is a bit older than, uh, he was born in 1970. He's 49 years old. Mitch is 32. It's pretty much a lifetime in pool, 17 years. How did you say Warren was? 49, I believe. 49? He was born in 1970. May 2nd, 1970. Okay. Boy, May is just full of birthdays. Not mine. Not yours. It's my wifey's, but not mine. I'm going to toot my own horn. Today's my birthday. That's right. I, I forgot to wish you <laughs> happy birthday. That's I wished right. you happy you. birthday yeah, you when you got here but you and then online, but I did not wish you happy birthday on the stream. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, <laughs> children oh gosh, of all ages, <laughs> this is Ben Sutherland's birthday. <laughs> oh, you're too kind, sir. <laughs> got to give you some fanfare. Yeah. Oh, okay, back to the action. Now that I'm thoroughly well, embarrassed. What did he get, two balls or just one? I think just one. But he's going to get this 15 ball. Or the, is it the five that goes? It's a 15. Now the five. Now the five. And then the 14. Then he probably works his way up and banks the nine or looks at that combo. Vince says, oh, the five he's not going to bank the nine. He's going to play the combo. Uh, I think he banks the nine. Does the five go? It looks like it. I think you might have to use a little inside. Kind of throw it slash cheat it a little bit, but mm. maybe not. <laughs> he's you not know, uh, there's too much space to throw it. I think he, he, he might play this nine ball into the four. To throw the cut, six in the cut pocket. Cut the four just a little bit, because I think that combo is just slightly off, but the way he's coming into it. It makes from, it. Yeah. He's yeah, going to hit the high side of the four exactly, to throw it. Exactly, yeah. yep. 
Yeah, that's, that's what he's looking at too. Certainly a good looking shot for him. Uh, he's gonna go right at the combo. Okay. He's gonna just go ahead and cut it. And this got him the nine. Why does he flip his hand? He's got a shot on yeah, the Yeah, they've nine. we've seen a lot of hand flipping, haven't yeah. we? <laughs> and his cue ball goes into the one for position on the fourteen. I'm not flipping my hand, I'm kind of okay with it. Perfectionist. Possibly. Did he want an angle to go into the stack? He's probably going to draw to the rail. No, he's just going straight down. He didn't go into the one ball there. I thought he well, did. Now he's one. back looking at the same shot we saw two innings ago. <laughs> and the and hand flip. Back to the hand flip. <laughs> Will he do it again? He'll look at something else. And he may. We saw Gabe. Ambidextrous hand yeah. flipping last match. It was it was both of them. <laughs> and Ben demonstrates here in the booth yeah. how he did it. <laughs> it's I get a kick out of. Well, see what was he hand flipping about? He, geez. I get a kick out of kind of being able to read the players like that. When you can see their hand gestures, their facial expressions, you kind of get a little insight to, into what they're feeling. I like that. Well, see, I think I'm doing something wrong because I just watch the balls. I try to just focus on the table. My world revolves uh, around the rails and what's inside those rails. Okay, Anything that's blue on that table is where my world is and the diamonds. Uh, are you going to pocket this and come up into the 12 or just go try. spin around? Yeah, just like that. I'm going to try just that right there. I'm going to get I the three ball. I wonder if maybe he just naturally traveled too forward up to the center of the table. Can't cut it. There's right. no room. There's no room to get by that ball. I guess maybe. That's risky. Yeah. This is better. Oh, he's going to... He's playing the eight. He thinks he can cut it. He says, I can cut that mustard. And, and he can. He but there's a pocket up there he's not going to find. He got shape on the combo up there. Shape he did not need. All that was was uh, protection in case it hung up. Just made the ball, said the heck with it. Two games to one. They're on break. The importance of the lag in one pocket when you're racing to three. Mitch wins this this uh, game. He's break, uh, Warren will be breaking for the for the match. And Mitch has to win this game because it's a race to three. And as we've seen so far in the three racks that have been played, we've held serve. Mm -hmm. That was another thing that the players wanted. They wanted a longer race. They wanted a race to four instead of three. They felt it was um, a short race. Yeah, it's like, like we were talking about a little earlier. That was kind of catch-22-ish. I mean, how long do you want the matches to go or risk them going? But at the same time, you want the players to be happy, and you don't want someone to feel like they lost based on luck or because it was too short of a race. So it's there's a there's a fine line that that you know everyone involved in this has to kind of walk in. Well, of course, the better players always want the longer race. Mm -hmm. It's in their favor. Um, the shorter players, the, the 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 players that aren't as good as some of the other guys, sometimes well, they'd rather play a little longer so they feel the long race is you know gives them more play time. Yeah. Um, the dead money wants mm -hmm. the longer race. Yeah. Um, but the players that think they have a half a chance want the shorter race because they can win in a short race. One mistake, it puts more pressure on the players on every shot. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's almost like someone's on the hill at all important. times. Yeah. But um, so you know, you can weigh it either way, mm -hmm. good and bad. So there's there, there's reasons for it, and Warren's going to do what here? Bank that nine ball? Wait a minute, that yeah, that's bank the nine ball and take the cue ball. Where does the nine go through the six seven? I'm thinking it might. Oh, I don't know. He's looking at it long enough to to, to tell me that there might be space. Would, would he test Mitch with a long shot on the one? There's a good angle. It looks like it goes by. He's going underneath. Oh, 
he almost started. I, I think what he was lining up for was to play the 12 ball into the eight, take him out. He's just going to take out the one and put the eight ball, uh, put the cue ball by the eight ball. That's Pocket. Pocket. Didn't give up the bank. Yes, he did. Give me just a sec, folks. I will be right back. Yes, he did give up the bank. Mitch is going after this bank shot. He hit it pretty good. Not going to make it, but he hit it pretty good. Nice speed. It's protected. He may be able to go to the rail and move the ball. Careful not to scratch. Gets too deep behind this ball and it scratches. If the speed is, you know, there's a couple things you can do here. Not scratch is one of them. Scratch is another that he could do. So, let's see what he settles for. Well, he looks at this ball. We'll go over some of the I don't know if I've been over the sponsors. We like to let you guys, remind you guys who our sponsors are. We've got jhelford.com, Pool Wars, and more Pool Wars. Predator. Predator is the official cue, glove, and chalk of Q Sports International. Cyclop. They are using the Cyclop Hyperion balls. And Mitz tried to steal that 12 ball right in that hole. Uh, a little bit further on that cue ball and he likes that a lot. We are playing at Griff's in Las Vegas, Nevada. JB cases are the official case of Q Sport International. What did I miss, sir? I'm just reading off uh, some sponsors while these guys battle it out. And Warren clears out his Mitch's uh, pocket and blocks it, blocks a shot. I wonder if he can bank that four ball and bring the cue ball into the stack. Kamoibrand.com. Now, the guy that does Kamoi, his name is John also. Is John it? Bertone. John Bertone, yeah, I thought so. John Bertone. I've met him, actually. He's a real nice guy. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, at, the, at the BCA Pool League National World mm -hmm. Championships and the USA National Championships. Yeah, it, it took me a couple of times to uh, reciting their names. Uh, at first, I was confusing mm -hmm. John Bertone and John Barton yeah, there you go. at the same time. Yeah, JB, both of them. Yeah, until I got to... Got to meet them both and put a face on the name. Simona's cloth is the official cloth of Q Sports International. The tables here have been newly recovered. They're playing exceptionally well. Simona's, Simona's 860 HR in the tour blue. Mm -hmm. And like I think I mentioned before, Predator is the official Q, chalk, and glove of Q Sports International. Sports International. For those pool league players and for those with on the Predator World 10 ball, keep in mind dates will be changing next year. March of 2020, the 11th through the 21st is when all that is happening the 17th through the 27th here in July That's good. will be happening next year. It's getting very close. Put that on your schedule now. Plan your vacations now. Yeah, we are pushing the, the USA Pool League and the BCA Pool League championships mm -hmm. uh, up a couple of months. Yep. So we won't have the 120 degree torture outside. Q Sport International, Sports International has heard your cries for cooler weather. Yeah, we'll be kicking off in the spring, March of next year, and I think yeah. by the 2025 or so, we're into February. 
Yes. 2023. 20, 23. All right. Yeah. They push so it back a little. No, actually, going March. From tank tops 3rd. to sweaters. Yeah, March 3rd, 2021 through the 13th, and then March 23rd, uh, 2022. So and this, this is what happens when we blink or get sidetracked for a minute. What happened? Well, Mitch has just run four, and he's on his fifth. <laughs> I look Why for am him. I picking up paper? <laughs> oh, oh, that's gonna stay oh, out. Oh. And uh, you can see it. He can make it. And he's oh, oh, he's just he got the commentator oh. curse. I put it on him. That's what you get. Here's he's your buddy, and you're you're near cursing the poor Sorry, guy. Here, I was reading so well, I wasn't watching what he was doing. <laughs> in Jason. So, what does Warren do here? I don't know if there's make a straight. The four. Is there a straight path through the 11 and the six? Then make it with the with the 11 ball rail first, and take the 11 out and freeze the cue ball to the uh, 15, 5, 14. See how he's lined mm -hmm. up for that? Yeah, absolutely. He's lined up pretty dead for that. I like that. Be taking away pretty much every option for Mitch as far as being aggressive. Yeah, and I don't see the two ball. Yeah, I don't see Mitch taking a flyer at the six from there. He's taking a cup. Yeah. That was last game. That was the first game. He did well the second game, and then he uh, got Kiamko'd the third game. Yeah. Warren just played. Got Kiamko'd. Warren played great and had a great break and just kind of held control. Majority of that. That was a quick game. That was about mm -hmm. a eight or ten minute game. I think rack number three was. Whereas rack number one, I think we were pushing about 40, 45 minutes. This rack is about, this uh, match is about an hour old. Uh, about over. that, maybe a little hour, over. Hour yeah. ten, hour fifteen. I got a handful of. Uh, oh, he could just see it right there. Local, or excuse me, uh, got the VNEA championships down the road here. Nice to see some of the Players participants in that yeah. coming over here to support this action. Take a look at some of the pro players. Yep. Saw a couple come in yesterday too. Yeah, it's been it's been nice. Mm. I dropped two ball the bank. Oops. Sorry, I think I yawned there I'm, for a moment. I might be going off this two ball real, real, real thin to the rail and up tie that chalk in the corner pocket. Just make sure I don't scratch. I'll even risk the scratch, but I'm, I'm going to be hitting somewhere between the first diamond away from the pocket and the middle diamond with the cue ball. That's where I'm going to attempt to hit. Hopefully I don't go past that and go right in the hole. <laughs> Our production crew frantically working to nip the lag issue in the bud. Hmm. And he yeah, did he just did. what you suggested. Yeah. Just went above it a little bit, but the Predator World Ten Ball Championships, July 22nd through the 26th, will be held at the Rio Hotel and Casino. It's a hundred thousand dollar guarantee, added guaranteed. Played on nine foot diamond tables during the BCA Pool League World Championships. Learn more about it at WorldTenBall.com. I'm excited for that one. Mm. I keep checking my email and I haven't got the, the invite. They must not want me there. I was invited. Were you? Mm -hmm. That sounds about right. To keep school. <laughs> <laughs> I have a relationship with them and I can't get invited. And Here you are. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't. Uh, I know my role. I'll be spectating. Yeah, the 17th through the 20th is the... It's the Diamond Las Vegas Open nine ball on nine foot tables, 17th through the 20th at the Rio Hotel and Casino. Played a couple days prior to the World Ten Ball Championships. That's a 20 limited to 128 players, $25,000 added on nine foot tables, and again during the BCA Pool League World Championships. 
And please go to playcsipool.com. That the diamond open, that's a three day or four day? Three day. Seven. 17th, 18th, 19th, and 20th. That's four okay. days. Okay, that makes sense. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that's a 128 player field, but they're running it on eight tables. So I assume there'll be some back to back matches just mm -hmm. to kind of get it quickly narrowed down to at least 32, you would think, by the end of day two. I would also highly recommend that you go to playcsipool.com and get signed up. We told Billy Thorpe about it, and he goes, can I just sign up for it right now? Yeah, he wanted to fork us some cash. Yeah, he did. He, did. he just forked over the cash. Should we tell him he's not signed up? I just didn't turn it in. I kept it. Got a bottle of tequila. Yes, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. A couple of bottles of wine. Mm. Actually, I haven't had any wine all week long. I'm having withdrawals. And with that, did he uh, get up? Oh, he didn't get up on the eight ball. He's not happy. It's a couple of different times he hasn't done what he should have done. We've got the payouts here for that hundred thousand dollar added upcoming event. It's pretty cool the way oh. it's been put together. It's limited to sixty four players. If you win one match, you're in the money. Top thirty two are getting paid. First is thirty thousand. Second is twenty thousand. Third and fourth, ten thousand. Fifth through eighth are five thousand. So um, I believe that's single elimination then, unless stage two is just single elimination, which I think now that I'm thinking about it, stage one is double. Stage two, once they get down to, I want to say sixteen. Nice cue ball, but I think I'm just going to go right off that uh, seven ball and open that up and take the cue ball to the same location it was before. business. Does very well with the cue ball there. Leaving Mitch. And he froze him on the rail. He did. Making it real tough for Mitchell. Oh. He was going with a high English shot to kill it there and not come back out. He might have just lost um, a lot of balls here. George, I'm sorry. Give me just a second. I'm going to grab my sweatshirt, pal. Mm-hmm. He'll draw by. He'll draw over for these balls. Get her in front of the hole. Oh, he's going to go up and down. Wow, he should be able to get six balls out of this and then get on the seven. He could easily run out. Mitch needs this game. wants this game. Close out the match. Mitch needs two. The nine ball is one of the balls he will probably have a shot at later if he does not get out. I think Warren gets out all the way. he probably play shape on the eight ball here or come up for the two or go all the way up for the seven. He's got the angle to do either He's got the angle to do whatever he pleases here. He could go two rails, position for the seven. If he overruns it, he'll have, well, he'll still have position for the seven. I would go two rails for the eight, one rail for the eight, then try to stay below the eight a little bit and get up for the seven and the one and the deuce, excuse me. Kind of like that. Not straight in. He's got the angle he needs. Warren has four, I believe. And he needs four. Yep. to grab a sweater. Air conditioner is kicking pretty good in here. It's caused me to get like a runny nose and a little coffee at times. Yeah, I had to call my wife and have her bring me up a jacket. Ah. 
Is that the beautiful lady standing over to the right? That is her. Right? That uh -huh. is her. Well, Warren's closed this out. He's just going to get these two. My question is, does he does he get on the one ball after the two ball? Does it go by the point? He'll probably stop, the, stop it and go three rails for the one. Missing a drive. ball on count? Or did yeah. somebody did he owe a ball to start this run? No. No, we just actually yes, he does owe a ball. You better keep that in mind. That's what he's looking at. Yeah. He just took a look in the trap. Uh just kind of double check where he was on ball count. I was wondering how I was going to get shape on that one. And that's going to hurt. That's going to leave a mark. Mitch needs two. He'll be pocketing this ball and probably attempting to make the two ball with his cue ball to keep it from uh, just his focus is to pocket the ball here. If he misses it, he loses the match. Going for both. Yeah. Got it. Went for both and, and got them both. He now needs one. Uh, you pocket the one ball and take the cue ball to the first diamond by the left-hand corner. Yep. Yeah, just softly with inside left English. Just kind of go up there real soft, just like that. And go right up there. Uh, he might have come out a little too far. Warren might shoot this. Yeah, we saw Gabe take this on a couple times. Yeah, he overcut it. You hear Mitch? Mitch just told him, you need one, you need, uh, you need them both, I need one. I think he shoots this. I would be shooting this ball. Yeah, I think I would too. Especially if my opponent only need one. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's... it's uh, Great the shot. only thing you can do wrong there is hit a little bit too much ball and scratch. If you miss the whole ball, you spot a ball. No biggie. It's protected. 7-7 seven, seven, I guess. Yep. You yep. Were, yeah, we were off a ball before. Scorekeeper was just double checking with us. Is he going to four rail this ball? No, he's going to play safe. Just Now see, Mitch might try to four rail this ball. Well, Mitch needs to be a little more cautious here. Than I, I agree. I don't like doing it. I don't think he will. I think the angle's not there for it. It's a three. It's a three railer just past the side pocket that goes back in front of the hole. The table's too new for this shot. Uh, this better slow down. It did. He's okay. Pretty aggressive shot there. But th with his speed, he, he was pretty confident. He's just going to two rail this up. Just bank it up, get it out of the way. Yeah, just bank it up. See how effective that is by the side yeah, pocket? Yeah, as I say, with that side pocket there, it just makes it even less options for Mitchell. He just actually taught me a shot. Um, that's it. You just have to hit it good and leave it right in front of the side pocket where you can't. It can't be. Uh, you can't shoot it. Uh oh. Hello, two rails. Hello, two rails. Um, no, there's no kiss. It's a free two railer. And I think he'll shoot it especially by his uh, body language. He, he it. hit it short. Held it up quite a bit. Yep. Oh, well, I don't know. He won't. Not from there. I would just cut this ball as thin as possible over towards my hole and take the cue ball up about where it is now. In other words, I would cut it with a little bit of inside English, just a hair. Just a nibble. Nibble on the potato? He's just, yeah, nibble on that potato. He's going to just shoot it. 
three rails and lose the cue ball and lose the match. Mitchell, Mitchell, Mitchell. Not going to be happy with himself. If Warren wins this, he's in an, he drastically improves his chances of winning that all around. He would be the only player, uh, aside from Gabe Owen, well, he'd be the only two left in the event on the winner's side, but um, he's a couple hundred points above Gabe in the all around contention. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He bobbled it. We've got action, folks. He's going to make this and then follow the one ball in or attempt to take it out, whichever he chooses. But he's making this ball. You follow them both? Yes. That's all you can do. And there's a shot here. Uh, some players like it. Some players don't. You spot the cue ball about four balls away from the center of the table on the head string, and you force follow the head ball into the pocket. You shoot it with a lot of draw, straight draw. You force follow the ball. He's going for the cross bank. He's going for the cross bank. I prefer to shoot the other one. Yeah. Although it does, if there's something that's wrong with this shot, is that you can scratch in the corner pocket by drawing it straight into it. Mitchell has given Warren the okay to tap the balls. Tap the balls to freeze up the spot. Mitchell apologized for something. Not sure what. Well, he said, "Hey," which Warren turned like, "What? Did I do something wrong?" And they're lined up nice and straight. He made the ball. What a nice shot. Oh, oh, he did not make the touch. ball. Oh, my. So it's another lifeline for Mitchell here. Well, he tried this shot earlier uh, with high English to hold the cue ball. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think he'll try. I don't know if he'll try to kick this ball. You know who shot this shot and kicked it in? Corey. Not in a game, but he was practicing this shot, kicking it into the hole. He hit it really good every time he shot it. Got the people asking for updates. <laughs> I'll just buy the package. There you Come go. On. Just go get, get the stream, dude. Come hang out with us. Yeah, I think it's like nine bucks or something for the day. Is it for the day? Something like that. I think the final day is like 11 or 12, but mm -hmm. it should be. We got an extended race. You got the finals. And 12 bucks for. He's thinking about shooting the shot. Eight to 12 hours of pool, that's a pretty good deal. I'm just going to hit this with a little bit of high English and just kind of take it out. Make sure it doesn't go four rails right back again. But, uh, he's kicking it. He's kicking it. Softly. Okay. Uh, did they determine whether or not it was frozen? Nothing was called, so. Yeah, it wasn't. Oh, yeah, frozen. it wasn't. You yeah, could see it rock. That was yeah, a good shot. That <laughs> was a really good touch. If he can see it, I would be two railing this ball with inside English. A little bit of left English. Yeah, he can. A little inside English on this shot. I'm two railing. Looks like he can. See if he makes a slight adjustment from the previous two, two rail attempt. He came up. He hit it short. About a diamond and a half short. Wow. Are you serious? Oh my. Are you serious? Oh, my, my, my. He says he was trying to make the ball on the side. Why? That gives up a one rail, or and he goes two rails with the cue ball. <laughs> wow. Let's watch well. the replay. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, now, I've known players to play that shot. It's kind of crazy, but I've known players to play it. Oh, Mitchell. Not off the spot. Come on, Mitchell. What did he do? He tried to kick the one to his hole, um, didn't make it, and I'm gonna take a, out of frustration. I'm going to take he, a shot at that. Uh, he has to make the nine ball and scratch. Uh, folks, we'll be right back. Uh, it's 5 o'clock now. Um, I think we're going to – I'm not what, sure what we're going to do. I'm not going to spread some false news. Yeah, let's find out what we're going to do. Stay with us for a little bit, and we'll let you know. All right, just a moment.